Every day should be a day for peace, development and human development. And we notice this especially in times when this is at stake, like in these times. And there are actors here in the world that are helping us for our unity, for our solidarity. And these are nonprofit actors, non-governmental organizations. And there is a day when these nonprofit actors are celebrated annually, and that's the World NGO Day. They are celebrated on the 27th of February each year. And I have the pleasure to welcome the founder of the World NGO Day, it's Marcus Skatmanis. Hi, Marcus. Hi, everybody. Awesome. Thank you for inviting me again to be at your show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mar Marcus. So we were having a little talk before this interview, and it was much longer than expected. We talked about so many things. And when we talked about, okay, what could we discuss for 2022? There is so much going on. Obviously, you said, well, Let's talk about the state of the nonprofits, of the NGOs. Also, in a way, the mental state, the mental health. When we look now, after two years of COVID crisis and pandemics, where would you describe our NGOs these days? There is so many things going on right now in, in today's world, uh, from uh, conflicts in different countries uh, to... COVID impact that impact negatively different sectors to economy problems and et cetera, et cetera. And obviously it's kind of impacts as well, the work of uh, non-profit NGO sector. So the work, their, their, their economy, their like uh, opportunities uh, that, you know, uh, they are developing. So, um, yeah, mental health is very important uh, subject to discuss uh, when it comes to the workplace, because behind each nonprofit NGO organization, there is uh, human beings, individuals that are working for those organizations, not just for organizations, but also for their own cause. And imagine that it's not just like when we talk about NGOs, we're talking about their cause, but we also need to think about and talk about those individuals that they have their own private lives. They go home, they have kids, they have wives and husbands, other, you know, uh, mothers and fathers, you know, to take care of. And when we think about today's world where we are right now, um, from like COVID impact, economy impact, uh, also the recent conflicts in, uh, in Europe. So it's caused uh, tremendous uh, anxiety and stress because it reflects not just emotionally, but also when you need to think about how I'm going to provide uh, uh, like uh, help or support to causes that I take care of as a nonprofit or NGO sector, how am I going to pay salaries to my employees? How am I going to, you know, earn income for myself and bring that back to my home? And look, if there is this uncertainties and problems that impact the daily life of nonprofit NGO sector, that's very badly goes to the mental health. And also we need to think about specific sectors when we talk about nonprofit organizations and NGOs that take care of people that lost their jobs or nonprofit NGOs that uh, take care of um, different programs, you know, uh, refugees. Um, there's so many of those programs and so many of those directions. When we think about the, those segments, during the COVID time, it became triple five times more than you know it was before COVID time I'm talking about the the pressure the pressure of those people mental health that provides that service and that's why I think it's very very important to talk about mental health at workspace at workplace uh, within NGO nonprofit sector and there are numbers of articles interviews or like 
some advanced uh, governmental programs doing something. You know, they're trying to help nonprofit sector, NGO sector with with the support their mental health. But there's not a lot, and sad, sad, sadly, there is not a lot of help when we talk about developing countries where uh, in some of those countries, mental health is still taboo, still they don't really believe or trust in mental health. And you can imagine what's happening in those countries right now uh, when we talk about, um, I'm talking about nonprofit NGO sector. I really w- remember our conversation and from last year and your touching story as well when you started the World NGO Day and when you had this idea to move on with this big goal and this purpose, it was not an easy ride. Absolutely not. You had a personal tragedy in your family that impacted you severely and made you even like want to quit everything. Well, if you now relate also to the nonprofits out there, what did you do? from your experience to kind of get back on track. Right. So going back to my personal experience, when I um, came up with this initiative, World Angel Day, back so many years back, um, that was uh, 2013 uh, when I was preparing for um, inaugural event for World Angel Day that's supposed to be in 2014 in February. Uh, so basically, it's the first World Angel Day. And imagine how much excitement and positiveness I had at that time, you know, because I was dealing with, um, like, uh, not just politicians, leaders, but also support, support from nonprofit NGO sector that they saw. And they believe that this is su- such an important uh, marking point. And then somehow, um, like, no. 2013 November uh, approached me and that was the tragedy what's happened in my own uh, family Um, like it it was one of the largest uh, uh, like construction disasters in Europe in Europe Union when the shopping mall collapsed uh, in Latvia in Riga and uh, during that uh, uh, tragedy uh, basically I lost uh, my father and my youngest sister that uh, was my best friend and um, it's it just changed my world it's changed completely how I you know how I have that purpose and beliefs that I want to um, you know so much that happiness you know that I want to give give back to the society and uh, and so much that passion that look I'm com- created this world danger day and it needs to be belong to society and suddenly you know when your personal world collapsed you know then obviously also the the rest of the world around you collapsed you know and you just don't see anymore what's what's purpose what's point you know to continue and do you know your activities your work your uh, like per- purpose you know your mission in your life and um obviously i had nice uh great people around me that told me don't quit uh because so many relies on you and so many rely on the world angel day the first event in finland and i listened to them and i didn't quit you know so but uh, on 2014 on 27th of february uh, when the first event happened it was obviously amazing event because you can imagine there was like uh, international leaders the right to the event you know amazing people attended you know s- so much support so much great words you know and i knew that that's going to be next level for world NGO day to spread their wing- wigs you know and fly in the sky and 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 uh, connect uh, with other countries you know um but personally i didn't f- I didn't have that, I didn't feel any happiness, you know, I didn't feel any anything, you know, I just, I felt like, if I can say, I felt like kind of zombie, you know, I just went there, gave my speech, and then just, you know, listened to people, and I was like, 
I tried to be happy, but I didn't have that feeling because I was still in that grief bubble and dealing with the consequences of uh, the tragedies that was still ongoing because you can imagine it was national tragedy, so much press attention, so much so much things, you know, going on. And, and also within my family, you know, that my family is literally destroyed. And um, it took years for me to come to, in, to re- realizations that I need my, I need professional help, you know, mm. to seek professional help from a psychologist, psychiatrist, you know, to work on my mental health, to go over that, you know, and just uh, kind of, the leads the ne- not necessary information from my uh, memory so it's in order to find back my purpose my like life my happiness and i that's why i really understand uh, other people what they are going over when their personal tragedies approach or impact their lives you know how it could change their uh, mission life mission their purpose their their feelings you know uh, because when you go over that experience you know it's easy to see those things in other people because it's easy to identify and that's why i see that so many uh, individuals that work for non-profit and your sector are really badly suffering and you can see that in uh, different forums where they chat you know or uh, like exchange their views you know or like also different campaigns that they raise you know and I'm talking about not about large international uh, non-profit organization that has uh, budgets you know as large companies have but I'm talking about small, medium-sized mm-hmm. organizations that um, are established, you know, to do something for their own communities, small communities, you know, with an open mind and ideas. Yeah. So that's my experience. Uh, so, and I feel it's important to talk about that and it's important to, you know, push uh, others. I'm talking about push also government leaders and uh, corporate leaders to support mental health cause or well-being cause, you know, uh, that supports non-profit NGO sector. Well, Marcus, this is a really strong subject. There is so much more behind it. And thank you so much for shedding light on this as you are also in constant touch with the nonprofits of this world. And yeah, there might be, I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate now where people say, okay, but let's, uh, let's give us the money first. That's, and we will move on. Is that the right approach? Well, uh, within NGO and nonprofit sector, the right approach is about believing your cause or the cause that you created and that what organization is serves. Each of those organizations, they have own purpose and course. And those individuals that are behind that, they have that mission, that connection, you know. And normally being around and within NGO sector and nonprofit sector, I have I felt like the first is that mission, that cause, that that dedication, you know, to, to do something, to help, to act, to change, to impact, to you know, collaborate. And after that is uh, basically analyze the the co- like impact what organization is doing. And just third one is when we talk about finance, when how we fundraise, what we do, what kind of activities we are you know doing for to, to bring uh, funds and finance to that course, you know. But number one is always that that feeling, that mission that I need to change. Yeah, and thank you very much for this uh, this approach. As it as we call them, also purpose driven organization. It's your purpose first that also gives you the the life uh, to do things that have seen impossible but can be possible. And let's also remind ourselves that this is the great great achievement of nonprofit organization of NGOs. And just a quick last question. When you had to, 
well, get yourself back on track. Even after you have made these great achievements, it was a hard time to well, redefine your purpose and your sense. What would you say to NGO leaders that are feeling the same? What should they do? Right, it's a very good and great question. Also a very big question. So uh, what's important, what helped me uh, when I felt I lost purpose? And it's, it was very difficult because when you lose purpose, you feel like you're kind of nobody. You feel like you don't belong to this world. You have stupid thoughts in your head, you know. Um, you, you just are confused with yourself and your, you know, what's happening. And first thing what I did, I canceled or like kind of this kind of moved from away from uh, media, from press, you know, uh, like news. I, I realized that that can impact very negatively my own well-being because, uh, you know, negative news can literally drown you down number two i started to look around and try to find information how to change your purpose or how to come up with a new purpose or how to help yourself you know and what's interesting i i came across uh, different amazing uh, people one of them is bo practor that uh, was literally talking about purpose and how to, you know, develop your own purpose, how to believe in yourself when you don't have those feelings to believe, you know, that because there's so many people around the world that have, have similar, uh, like, experiences, like my, I have one. There's numbers of other amazing people, like I, I have to literally take a list and read them, that Everybody, are, everybody of them to st try to impact positively how to change your life, how to develop, what to do, and they provide tools. And then personally, I found this very important tools for myself, what ha started to help me. I started to meditate. I was one of those people that really, I mean, I really didn't believe in meditation. Like I thought like, what is that thing, you know? Time, time, waste of time, you know, you just sit and try to, you know, relax and what then, and then what, you know. But then I, when you are in that situation that you need to put yourself together and, and move on, you know, uh, I felt like meditation is such an important tool. It's important to calm down. It's important to learn how to focus It's important to learn how to breathe. Uh, it's important to relax, you know, and it's important to feel balance, that your mood is not low or mood is not high, but mood is balanced. And when your mood is balanced, then you can start to make right decisions for yourself. Because when your mood is low and or up in the high, you know, so and when you make decision, then, then those decisions can lead you in wrong directions. Then from meditation, I, I continue to meditate. Obviously, then physical exercise, um, going to gym, help me physically kind of stimulate my body and feel like I am alive. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm here, you know, on this world. Then, then I move to food, food sections to eat healthy what I'm eating, how much sugar I'm taking in, how much uh, like coffee I'm drinking. You know, there's a lot of things that you need to learn also what you eat. Food change your body, you know, what you eat, it change your like body and, uh, and then uh, also your emotions and feelings. So uh, I went all those steps, you know, um, And it started to change my point of view. It's, I started to feel better. I started to feel like something is going on with me positively. Then suddenly I felt that, wow, 
I have to see also psychiatrists and psychologists, you know, because before I thought I, you know, I've, I was again from those people that I thought they, they, how they can help you really, you know, you, I was like, used to be the person that I can help only myself, you know, I don't need to look for, for help from the like specialists, like psychologists, psychiatrists, because I, it's to do probably with the fact that I uh, originally I'm from um, I came from Latvia, and I grew up in the kind of community where, like, also psychology and psychiatry was kind of taboo, you know, uh, in those uh, early years when I was very very young. Look, and that's why um, I thought that it's 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 not gonna help. But to be honest, when I met right people and they started to work on me, you know, and doing different therapies, you know, to delete the information, memories, organize myself, you know, it's helped me so much, you know. So, and then one beautiful day uh, in September, I was like just literally doing nothing, you know, sitting, writing or something like that, you know. And then the bubble just collapsed, you know, and I felt, wow, I feel me, I feel myself, I have my purpose, I can be happy, you know, I can do things, you know, I love what I did in the past, you know, and suddenly I felt as well how important is also the World Angel Day, you know, that is still International Day with me or without me, you know, but I felt that connection that what amazing job I did, you know, I can be proud, I can be grateful, and I need to move on to the next story, to next my, next my uh, sorry, chapter, so that uh, what's my purpose, you know, and then I came up with this new purpose, these new ideas, what I can do for me, for living, for my life, you know, so, and that's why, that's, it's a long advice, but I would suggest, this is, you know, you can't give very short advice for people that, you know, have this mental health struggles or, or um, problems, but there is this opportunities and what's important that you guys, you are not alone. There are people that can help you. Wow, Marcus, this is such an inspirational interview. I think even better than the last interview. Let us really celebrate this World NGO Day. Think of our purpose. Move on strong with the best frequency. Thanks so much, Marcus, for sharing your experience and yeah, really your 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 deep knowledge about this and really inspiring us. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity to share my experience. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. If you like this interview, also check out the interview with Marcus on the World NGO Day. Also subscribe to the channel for more inspirational videos on live video and how you can transport your purpose and gain engagement and support.